All right. We've got a room. All you at home or wherever you're at. Um, we got we got a lot of people here. You're missing out. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Have you guys? I mean, look, we, we did this about four years ago and realized that the people that came and, and who who came four years ago? So just a few of you. And and that's what we kind of the people that came last time and that had never been to this part of the country before. We realized, you know, we live here uh, about four hours north um, of here up in Salt Lake. It's about a four-hour drive. You know, we, we kind of realized, look, we, sometimes we don't realize and understand that uh, people don't see this all the time, right? And, uh, and so we wanted to, to do this again and share it with more people because it was, we just have so much positive feedback. It's hard to get here, right? Everybody know that like, by now? It is hard to get here, but we really think it's worth the effort to make the drive, to make the plane flights. It's a, it's a long way to get. Oregon, you're out in kind of the, not close to an airport either, right? So they just drove because it's hard to get to an airport. It's hard to get to an airport here, but it really is a, a very beautiful place here. And so thanks for coming. Thanks for making the time. Take, take the time to uh, reflect, relax, to reevaluate. I mean, we're out away from everything here, where you can get away from the busyness of what you're doing every day, right? And 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 hopefully you take that time and and think about things that you can do to change uh, the way that you're doing things. Okay. So uh, so you should all have an agenda. It's very detailed. Um, if you don't. You can go back and talk to Chris or any of the Q floors people in the back. Chris in the back back there, she'll get you an agenda. But you know, it, it tells exactly what we're doing. But basically, the the short end of it is we'll be here in the mornings uh, here, and then we're gonna let you go like around lunchtime, just after lunchtime, we'll let you go explore the park, let you go do whatever you want, have some free time while you're here, um, so that you have a chance to see what's going on. Um, there's hikes in the park, like I think you've all figured out that the park, you, you just walk down this little sidewalk right here, and you're in the park. You basically have to take a tram to get through the park, and that's where you pick it up is just right here. So it's perfect. So um, a very proximate, uh, the proximity of where to get here, there's short little hikes that you can take that are not real stressful. Um, there are more rugged, uh, kind of extreme adventure. If you're really into it, Angel's Landing is kind of the extreme up there, right? And uh, and the Narrows. But there's all kinds of things that you can do. At least, I would at least take the tram to the end of the park, get out and walk around at the end up there where the Narrows are. Uh, there's a little path that you can walk as far as you want. I would at least do that if uh, while you're here. So So take some time to do that. Uh, at the very minimum. Um, so um, so anyway, we'll be in here in the mornings, right? Breakfast will be eight o'clock every morning here, kind of like today, you can bring it in, you can do whatever. Um, and then we'll have catered lunches uh, both today and tomorrow right after our sessions. So just take, take the lunches, you can take them with you. I think they're meant to be kind of portable if you want. Uh, so you can do that too. And I mentioned, we'll, we're going to give you some free time to do some of these things. So just while you're here, don't just go back to your room and lock yourself in your room and, and get on your computer. Just, I really encourage you to take some time to, to see, uh, that's why we brought you here, right? Is to give you that other opportunity to, to reflect and see what's going on. All right. So. I'm going to take just a few minutes this morning, hopefully not too long. Uh, when do I end again? Oh, she put an agenda up here. You know I don't pay attention to these things. 9.50. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit. I want to take a little bit of time to get... Um, 
a little bit personal this morning and let you into a little bit of my life, our family's lives, um, and and uh, a little experience that I've had in the last couple of weeks knowing this was coming up. I want to talk a little bit about my grandpas. I know a lot of you have probably seen our anniversary video that we created for this event four years ago. Um, if you haven't, you can go on YouTube and Google Q Floor's anniversary video and and watch it. I would encourage you. There's a nine minute version. There's a twenty minute version, but it gives you a lot of insight to who we are, where we come from, that kind of a thing. It mentions in there a little bit about my grandfather on my Ogden side, on my father's side, who was a, a sheep herder here in Utah, and because of some health and some of my grandmother and 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 they had some real business failures with the sheep and they got pushed to Southern California in the 1950s and that's where he started his floor covering store. So that's where we got our st start in floor covering. It was my grandfather in the 1950s and it's kind of trickled through and there's been different things. You know, I, I went to school to get out of floor covering and, and that didn't work. <laughs> Lasted for about 10 years and then and then now for the last 25 years, we've been doing this. So that's how we got into it there. I want to talk about my other grandfather uh, that you probably don't know very much about. It's actually my great grandfather. Um, he, uh, hopefully I can get through this. This might be tough for me, but he, um, he was born in Italy. And under very bad circumstances, he was in an orphanage. Uh, his mother, and they don't know who his father is. His mother, we kind of know, but we don't really know. Um, but he was given up at a very young age. And a woman there in Italy took him in and basically raised him from the orphanage, took him out of the orphanage, raised, raised him as her own. Uh, the father didn't like that another mouth to feed all that kind of stuff it was not a good situation between him and his father uh, adopted father let's just say not officially adopted but anyway this mother took care of him and 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 really brought him in and and once he got to and and he worked a lot like they made him they called him the mule they they made him work they made him uh, kind of like he was an, a slave, right? And it, the father and the brothers and everybody there kind of made him do all the bad stuff. So it wasn't the greatest thing. So the mother and himself eventually got him and another relative got him to where he could take a, a ship when he was 16 years old to America. And he came here all by himself. And... That's how we got here. Um, some relatives, or not even relatives, but somebody he knew in Philadelphia put him on a train and sent him to Utah because he thought he might have some some relatives here. And that's how we got to Utah, uh, was from this guy, right? And so um, that's how we got here, right? I was in a... Uh, in a church service about a week ago, I and I think, you know, I was maybe even thinking about, you know, we're coming here and stuff. We were singing a hymn. So crazy thing. We were singing a hymn there. All creatures of our God and King. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. All creatures of our God and King, you know, lift up your voices, let you sing. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard that song? Right. It should be a very popular song. Um, it was written in the 1200s, the lyrics, uh, by by a, na a man named St. Francis of Assisi. You've probably all heard of this guy. Very famous Christian, uh, and he was the one that kind of wrote the lyrics to that song. Well, anyway, the reason I bring this up, singing this song, and I, I kind of had uh, an experience. Um, this, this hymn, this song talks about just the simple things in life, right? That we're grateful for the sun, for the moon, you know, for the uh, the clouds, the fire that, you know, that gives us warmth, all these kinds of things. 
right? And as I was um, singing this, there's a there's a verse in there that says, Thou flowing water, pure and clear, make music for the Lord to hear. And and as I was singing that, I kind of I kind of had this like I don't know what you'd say, but I I saw your faces here. And you know, I had a just a, an extreme gratitude for the simple things, which includes all of you and the simple things that you do for us and that you have done for us for the last 25 years. And, and then I could see like our vendor partners and all the people that have brought us to where we're at and just have this gratitude of, of, of where we're at and what we're doing and knowing that we would be here. I don't know. I just, it just that was kind of an overwhelming feeling. And, and then I, lastly, I just, I thought, of my partners in this business, my brother and my wife, our employees, and so grateful for, for them, the employees that we've had over the years, and and we couldn't do it without them. And I I think you know that they really are here to serve you. They care about you. And and uh my brother's been a great partner also. Um, he's really taken care of us. He's taken care of us financially. He he's very makes us be very responsible with with the money that we've been given, and so I'm grateful for that. My wife, you know, she she's been our partner also. with the marketing she had to raise our family we started this business when we had uh very young kids and our kids know nothing else other than key floors um and she's had to juggle all of that the marketing and the kids and me not being there a lot so i'm grateful to her and to my kids for the support they've given me also. So anyway, thank you. I've just wanted to express my gratitude to, to y'all, to my employees, my partners, our vendor partners. Thank you. Let's move on to something else now. I'm glad I could get through that a little bit. Um. I want to show this uh, this graphic here real quick. I think most of you know this, but I, you know, I, I never want to assume. This graphic here is basically showing um, there, there's a term outside of floor covering, which is uh, uh, very very commonly used. The term is ERP. If you look in the middle where it says ERP software, it stands for Inter Inter Enterprise Resource Planning. It's a term that's used for software products that are like Q4s, okay? They're also called business management software, but outside of our industry, you'll always hear this term called ERP, okay? So if you ever hear that, it's becoming more common in our industry now, it's being used more. It just means the main business software that is controlling everything, right? Could be QuickBooks, could kind of be considered that, although it's a light, Wait, because it doesn't do everything that an ERP does, but um, but Q floors is definitely like the center of all of this. If you look out around Q floors, there's all these other technologies that connect into Q floors and that are used, right? And so, um, you know, you can see estimation, e-commerce, digital marketing and websites, room visualization, um, CRMs. 
But really, if you don't have this core piece in place, even though you're using these other products to generate more sales or do other parts of your business, it's gonna you're gonna lose out in some of the key things that you could have. And you're generating more business, but you're probably losing that because you're either having to hire people to replace what the software is doing, or you're just going to lose out on the, on the extra business that you're trying to generate. So it's really key that you have this in place. And I'm, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir. You probably all know this last night. You were all saying this, right? Without this, we would be in a bad shape. And so I think firsthand, you all understand this, but I want you to understand that all these other things are kind of outside. And this is what an ERP system is, right? So I kind of wanted to address something this morning um, that I, it's been going around the industry and I just wanted to address it with our customers so that, so that we're clear on, on what's going on and what's happening. There's been a lot of confusion um, going on. So in the floor covering industry, there's approximately, and I'm, I'm, all these numbers are approximate numbers, but I think they're, it's a pretty good indication of what's going on. There's approximately 11,000 dealers in our industry, right? It goes up, goes down. As, as the in, uh, economy gets worse, the amount of dealers go down, but it stays in this area somewhere. About 7,000 of this 11,000 are still using QuickBooks, Excel, pen and paper. How many did we hear last night that were using pen and paper that went to, to Q floors? There was a lot of that, right? So, um, but even these people, most of them are very small dealers. Rarely do I see somebody that's doing more than $2 million a year that's still using QuickBooks or something like that. It's not very common, okay? I'm not saying it doesn't like, Every now and again, I'll see a $5 million store that's still using QuickBooks, but they're they're really not in a good place, okay? And so, um, so most of these 7,000, it's the majority, right? Um, they're very small. We estimate, and this not comes just from me, but it comes from a lot of different sources, our vendor partners, some of the associations with the industry. We feel like there's about 4,000 dealers out there um, that are using flooring specific ERP systems, business management systems, okay? So almost twice as many don't use anything or are using something like QuickBooks, okay? But they're small. So these 4,000, we always see, and Trent's gonna talk about this later, um, these 4,000 are better run businesses and they're more profitable. Uh, we see that over and over again, the people that are, that have invested the money and that have uh, gone this way, right? So if you take those 4,000, I can break it down like this. And I think these are pretty accurate numbers. So of those 4,000 dealers, 33% of them use Q floors. 33% use another system called RFMS. We've heard a lot of people that were on that system. 13% use a, um, a technology called Rollmaster, and 11% uh, one called Pacific Solutions. So these are top four. And then there's two or three other software companies out there that are, make up the other 8%, okay? Again, this is approximate, but I think this is a pretty good feel for how things look. So if you, you see here, QFloors has become one of the largest if not the largest, we will become, we're the fastest growing still. So we'll, we'll become the largest. RFMS's customer base, their average customer is a little bit bigger than ours, okay? So we have a little bit different dynamic, but they've been in business another 15 years than us before we were, and we're more established. So we've caught up in these 25 years. We've come all the way from zero to one of the top, flooring software companies in the industry, okay? Now, why do I bring this up? It isn't just to show this. There's a reason behind this, right? If you look here, in the last two years, there's been a consolidation, a tech consolidation in the industry where the top of the top four companies, three of them have been purchased by 
you could call it private equity, you could call it, it's money that's coming from outside of the industry, right? There's a lot of different kinds of private equity that can be raised. And so I'm not gonna get into that. Let's just say though, that money from out, big money from outside of the industry has been coming in, purchasing up, not just ERP systems, that's part of it, other systems, uh, websites, uh, companies and all that kind of stuff have been being purchased, okay? So um, if you look here, Syncly, uh, a year ago, uh, purchased RFMS and just a few months ago purchased Pacific Solutions, which if you combine those two together, it's 43%, right? 44%. And then two years ago, a company called Broadly purchased Rollmaster, okay? Um, recently, within the last three or four months, well, probably started in about May, there was a, a rumor put throughout the industry that QFloors was also going to be purchased by Sinkly. It was started not by us, okay? But it went through the industry so much that I was having our customers call us like well, at least once a week, maybe twice a week, saying that in a meeting, they had heard that we were going to be purchased. What's going on? And you can imagine how not good that was, especially from the people that had already come from those other companies and spent money to come with us, right? It was it was a huge concern. And, and so um, we've done our best to try to diffuse that and make people feel assured that that's not going to happen. You can see here what would happen if Sinkly came and we sold to Sinkly, they would have 80% of the market. Now, what do you think would happen if that happened? Prices would go up. And typically, in private equity, the, typically the service goes down. And there's a reason for that. I'm, I'm not saying across the board that happens, but it usually goes down because in private equity, the investors want their money back fairly quickly. And so the best way to do that is raise prices and cut staff, right? Which means instead of your Q floors being a one minute hold, you would be 30 minutes, right? Or like some of our competitors now, you can't even call them anymore. You have to email in and then wait for them to call you back. Usually between 24 and 48 hours, right? So that's what would happen, right? And even if, if we sold to Broadloom, now you're consolidating down to two companies. And I can tell you there would be a collaboration there with the same type of thing with pricing. So what I'm trying to say is Q Floors is holding back and keeping things reasonable within the industry right now. Okay. And I can tell you, you know, we get approached all the time. Like, I'm not going to say that we're not. It's kind of a crazy thing right now. So I'm just saying that's what would happen, right? Um, I'm just going to tell you, we're not going to allow this to happen. Um, I don't care how much pressure people put on us. We're not going to do this. It would not be good for anybody, right? So specifically, we will not allow Q floors to be acquired by either of these companies. I'm just telling you, this is not going to happen. Um, it would be the worst thing for um, our customers and the industry in a whole. And not just our customers, but other part of the industry. We we are seeing right now a pretty good migration from these other companies into the queue floors. Like unprecedented amount of interest to get away from what's going on. Okay, We've never seen this in the history of the 25 years. I've never seen the interest that we now have. And this has only been in the last two or three months. So um, with that interest, uh, my, my other concern is that we don't allow the new business to get in the way of our current customer base and our current service that we're out offering. We're not gonna let that go. And I know it's a little bit of a stress on all of us, um, but we're committed to do that. and. We continue to try to hire. We're very picky. I think you know that. We're very picky in the people that we hire. Um, some don't last. Um, and and uh, 
we're, we're here to give you the best service that we can. And, and I think you've all seen that there's been surveys within the industry that say, uh, not from us, but outside people, that Q Floors is the highest rated in customer service and ease of use, customer satisfaction. We are killing everybody else. Okay. And I don't want that to go away. So we're, we've always been extremely focused on it and we will continue to be focused on it, okay? That's all I wanna say about this. I just wanna reassure everybody that this is not gonna happen, okay? No matter what you hear, no matter what people say, uh, we're committed, my brother's committed, uh, my partners are committed that we would never do something like that. Does that mean that we would never partner with somebody or somebody else that's going to make us more competitive or or better for you, we may. I don't know. I, I can't say. We don't know what all the opportunities would ever be, right? But but that I can promise you, okay? Let's get on to something more cheering now. I just, I just wanted to get that out of the way because, you know, I, I know there's been questions um, and uh, let's get on to some new and better stuff here now. All right, I still have some time. Let's talk about the things that we have um, uh, been working on since our last users conference, right? Uh, we met about a year ago. We try to do these about every two years. Um, COVID threw everything off and kind of threw us off track. And, and so we had a conference last year, we're having one this year probably won't be for another two years, right? But since our conference last year, there's been some things that we have been working on, specifically QPay, right? Let me just take a, uh, uh, just a second to tell you and talk about QPay for just a second. Um, QPay is our payment processing um, that, uh... Chris, could you grab me some water? Um, it's our payment processing um, uh, arm of Q floors. You know, this has been really surprisingly, I didn't know this or we would have done this a lot earlier, a lot sooner. Uh, this has been one of the best things for us and for our customers. For us, because I don't have to deal with the complaints that I was dealing with before, right? Because we were relying on outside partners and sources to help us through this and and uh, we had partnered with two or three other companies throughout the year or throughout the years. And, and, uh, and, and it would always go good for a while, right? What they would promise you would be good. And then usually like the consolidation thing in floor covering technology, well, that was happening in payments technology, right? And, and uh, there's a company out there called Global. They were buying everything. And this sure, it, the sure thing was happening where <laughs> we'd get with the company and as soon as they were purchased <laughs> then everything that we were doing went out the window and so it was hard because we would develop integrations and and things like that and then and then it would be hard so um finally i, I we're about three years into it now three or four years um two and two and a half so, so it was released um, but we started about more than three years ago working on this because we could see another problem coming down with our current partner. And um, and so we decided that we would we would create our own payments company where we could control uh, the customer support, not have to rely on other people to support our customers, where we could control the pricing, where we could control you know, the technologies, the, the terminals um, uh, that were being used. So, you know, and since we've kind of taken that in-house and created, we've created another division within QFloor, it's called QPay. Uh, by the way, we changed the name from QProPay to QPay in, in case anybody's, and there's reasons, there was too much confusion with QPro and, and stuff like that. So we, we rebranded to QPay. Um, and uh, uh, it's just been, it's been awesome. Um, uh, our support, we can support people better. We can support more people with less people. So for us, and I think for the customers that have converted onto it, 
I hear very, very little negativity going on there. Um, about a couple of weeks ago, we did a webinar. Uh, it was an hour and a half long, hour and 15 minutes. So I can't go through everything that we went through. I went, we went through all of the customization, all the integrations, um, everything that had to do with that. And so I'm gonna refer you to that uh, webinar. Um, let's see here. Oh, dang, I don't know that I, I might have to come out of here real quick. I can drag this out into a separate window. Um, I don't want to do that. Anyway, here's our support site, right? And um, under here we have training videos and webinars. I don't know if you guys have seen this page here, but any of the webinars that we've done in the past are listed on this webinars page here. And this new QPay features in October, this is where you would click to go to go to that, right? So let me see if I can come back here. I'm probably gonna have to start this over. I don't know, maybe it'll go from here, let's see. So, um, so we did this webinar, there's tons of details on there. It shows every feature that we have in QPay, right? Um, but the more recent things that we've just released within the last few months, we've created a brand new payment site that's really a lot better looking. It's more modern looking. Um, if I click on here, um, you'll see that uh, this is kind of what it looks like. So your customers, when they're making a payment from outside of the company, from a website or something, this would be what this looks like. So you can basically type their name in like this. Uh, the ones with the red dots you have to put in. Let me go here. Um, the second page you can select either credit card or e-check. We have e-check options. We've just got a new partner there. Anybody that's been on our e-checks for a while, you will be converting over to a new company, um, a new backend processor that we have there. Um, so that's a new thing that we've been working on also. Um, the sales order and the payment amount, if the requests come from directly in queue floors, you can lock those in so the customer can't go in and change. So that you can say, I request that you pay this much and it will lock them in. If you don't put anything in there, it doesn't have to lock them in. So it's just kind of up to you how you want that to, to work. Uh, credit card. And then here's just where you put all the information in like you normally would with a credit card, right? This is not my credit card number. Okay, so I saw some of you writing that down. Yeah. Uh, um, one thing uh, that not too many people know about QPay, I don't know if I mentioned this in the, um, in the seminar. So this is where you review the payment and then you're just gonna hit make this payment, right? And that's how it works. Um, uh, we do require zip codes now um, in Q in QPay. In our other processing partners in the past, they really didn't require that. If the zip code is not correct um, in your um, in there, that it will charge. It's it's a big difference. It could be at half a percent to three quarters of a percent more just by not having the correct zip code. So many of you will notice that it might come back and say ABS or zip code's not right, something like that. You need the right zip code. We can turn that off if you don't, if you want it like it was before, if you want to allow bad zip codes to go in, but that's the result. Anytime you put a bad one in, you would get uh, an extra charge. So that's, that's why we do it that way. That's the default, right? Um, 
and I think everybody's got this message, but I just wanted to to get this out there one more time. Um, um, there's a fraud thing, I'm sure. Uh, how many have you lo have lost cash and carry credit card fraud? How many? Is that all? Put your hands up again. Okay, that's only about a quarter of you. All right, we're going to save the other three quarters of you probably about 10,000 bucks because that's what it costs for this lesson, okay? If you take cash and carry sales and take a credit card and, and, and it's usually the fraud part, and this is going throughout the industry. I mean, we're usually getting about a phone call a week uh, is what I'm getting, right? Slow down a little bit in the recent months, but just so that you know, um, if you take a cash and carry sale, with a credit card and you let that go, the credit card could go through and show valid. And then that card will come up to be stolen and that person, you won't know where they're at. So if it's somebody that you don't know, usually the scam is some contractor, he ran out of stuff, he's gotta have it right now. You know, it's a really fast turnaround type of a thing. I'll send my installer to go pick it up. Here's my credit card, they, your credit card goes through. You give them the stuff and then you don't know where it went. And then, you know, a week later, somebody's calling and say, you took a stolen credit card. You're on the hook for that. Okay. Dealers are on the hook. So just make sure. And I would never do an ACH payment with a cash and carry sale. That's even worse. That It's usually not that. Okay. But I would never do that. All right. So anyway. Any questions about that? Just don't do it, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's what our new payments uh, site looks like. Rice's, I hope I, I took the liberty to use your website again. You can put buttons on, on a website like this, right? Like a payment button. So we've got some, some people that have already done this. So this is Rice's uh, right here, their website. And... It, it's your old one? Oh, when? Oh. They're going to talk here in a second. All right. So, but I think it still works, right? So, if you click on the button, you can see that it comes up to our payments page like this. So, that would work. That could work on any website. Um, you know, uh, buttons on emails and, and Q reporter. So you can see this is like a Q reporter report. You could put a pay now button on there. So when you're sending them a bill, if they click on that, they can just pay it like that. Okay. You could put that same button on your own emails, like in your email signature. If you wanted to do that, you could put it in there. So these pay now buttons and pay now options could be anywhere, right? So many of you have probably used tokens in the past and that's still valid and that's still good. So there's a place for that. But here's another place quite often more used in the retail side of things. Okay. I saw a question back here. ACH would work both. Yeah, they can select which one they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ACH will work this way too. Yes. No. No. It does, hold on. It does work with like, you know, uh, tap though with Apple and uh, Google, Google Pay tap taps and stuff like that. It does work with that. So yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, they're a lot lower. Um, I should have gotten the rate. I think it's about 0.4%, something like that. Much, much lower. There's other options too. We do surcharging. I think you guys have seen the surcharging button down at the bottom of Q floors. Now we can do that. You don't have to. We, we only have about 15% of our customers that use surcharging. That's a discussion for another day. We get in, kind of get into it in the video a little bit. So a lot of these kinds of Let's just say that I think almost any option that you could want with credit card processing, we now offer. 
anything like and then we've spent a long time on a lot of these things to bring this to you but we just feel like it's it's uh extremely important and has been really good for us and our customers um the newest thing that we're working on right now rices is actually doing this so it's kind of in testing uh, shortly after the conference, you should have this option for you that are already on QPay, where if somebody makes a payment on a website now, on that website that I was just showing you, those payments can now be automatically downloaded into Q4s. You don't have to retype them back in. Okay. Um, we're still testing it with a few people, but it will be rolled out. If you're wanting to get on that feature, just email I think we said it's in the video. It's in the video. What, who are you supposed to email? Tell me. Was it Irene or was it? Oh, QPay at QProSoftware.com. So if you're interested in getting on the list, and then once we set you up, we will email you back and get with you and let you know that it's been set up. So, yeah. Oh, I need to repeat the questions. Sorry. For the streaming people. Remind me if I don't repeat your question. By the way, only a few of these first sessions will be streamed. So, but we wanted to include with this all this new information as many people as possible. All right. So those are some just briefly some of the things with QPay, right? All right. Here's a new one that nobody knows about. So everybody listen. We're coming up with an installation viewer um, that will uh, be rolling out here within the next little bit. Uh, let me give you a kind of a preview into what this kind of is looking like. This will be on a phone, on installers' phones, so that installers can look at their installation schedules, right? Um, let me blow this up a little bit. So we will have two versions. One, this is the phone version. So you can see how this would kind of look on a phone. Yeah, she already told me. Yeah, thank you. They're giving me directions here. I, by the way, I, I have, did I mention that we have an awesome staff? Let's, they are awesome, right? Um. So this is what it would look, the form, uh, there will be a form, uh, a format for a phone, and then also a desktop format. This is what it would look like on a phone, okay, for an installer. Um, you can see the installer's name would be up at the top when they're logged into here. Um, when they click on one of the days here like this, the details of that day will pop up at the bottom down here with a brief description. And uh, if you hit this up button here, it the whole page comes up with what these are. And then if the installer clicks on one of these, it will give him, let me click out here a little bit. It'll click, it will give him the details, more or less like the work order format from Q4s. No, it's just a viewer. You'll still have to give them the work order. You'll still have to give them your documents and all. This is just so that they can see what's coming up. Question was. Oh, the question was. <laughs> the question was, can you attach documents? Can you attach, you know, uh, like uh, the, the 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 drawings and that kind of a thing? And the answer was no. This is just a quick viewer so that they can see what their schedule is coming up. At least in this first version, right? Yes. Oh, you want to, uh, yeah. Is it going to cost, right? Is that, was that, is that how you, she said, is this an add on? And I interpreted it to say, is this going to cost? I'll address that. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is our first attempt to make this. You do not have to have QSCED. So this is coming directly out of Q floors. If you do have QSCED, then this stuff gets automatically populated, right? If you don't, then it's coming from, you would have to do it with Q floors. Okay, um, let's see here. 
No, no, this is just Q floors. Just oh, the question was, does it does it integrate with any other apps like uh, Google Calendar or anything like that? No, it's this is just a viewer just strictly from Q floors. It's just a view. It's a way for them to view what Q floors is telling them is going on. Okay. Um, let me come back here. So that's kind of what it looks like. We're still just uh, in kind of the beginning phases of this. Uh, I anticipate that this will be available by surfaces. So it's not like a year or six months. You know, this is a very short time period, at least to get this to this first version of the viewer. Okay. All right. There was a question about how much does it cost? If you have QPay, it's free. Okay. If you don't have QPay, $100 a month up to 10 installers. Okay. Yes. Uh, I We haven't come up with over 10, but it's probably going to be like $10. Oh, the, the question, sorry. We should grab a micro, if we have another microphone, can they, we sh will that work? I can, re I can restate the question. I can restate the question. I'm just like, you know how good I am at that. You're just gonna have to, act. I'm just going, man. I'm just going, right? All right, the question was, is there a cap to 10? Can you have over 10? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have QPay, it's, it's free. It doesn't matter. Unlimited. Uh, if you go over 10, there will be more costs. Haven't decided that yet. Okay. My question to you is what do we call this thing? So that we all know what it's called. I mean, I, I don't know yet. It's, we thought we would ask you. QView, we kind of already have. It's like, I don't know, QCalc. All right. This is what you do. Send your suggestions to Aaron, A-E-R-I-N-A-E. -E. It's not, there's an A in front of the E. A-E-R-I-N at QProSoftware.com. So yeah, we haven't we haven't named it yet. It's that new, but we've already started working on it. So talked about it a lot, and we've mocked up a lot of stuff. And we have the infrastructure. This will work through Q Connect. There's another Q Connect feature. So um, anyway, as things change, um, that's that's how. So we've put a lot of the infrastructure already in place for this. Any other questions about the installer viewer, installation viewer that I can repeat? Yeah. Oh, another question about QPay or uh, Q, uh, installer view, whatever. Yeah, it won't be. All right. So the question is, would there be a way for the installers to communicate back with the store through this technology? Um, the answer is no, because the way that the technology is designed right now is basically an outgoing information type of a thing. There's not really an, a real time. There's a way to bring information in, but it's not real time. So they wouldn't be notifying you like in a real time situation. Are you saying that they can't text or they can't? Maybe they're just going to 
job and they don't like to always like take notes. They just kind of log things in their head and they'll be like, oh, the trim here is this or the subfloor needs this and, you know, cat here, whatever, seen here. And so whenever they kind of make those mental notes, I feel like it would be really helpful to have them just, if they're already in that app, to be able to kind of type out like subfloor needs this, blah, 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 you know, four bullet points that they, instead of right. logging it in their head, could just kind of. Well, they always have, any time it's something different, they always have to contact us before mm -hmm. they do anything. But, but um, I think what she's saying is, it, put it, on be, the it just might be nice for them even to make notes for themselves. Yeah. You know, you know, just to put it over with their own. So they're they're saying they were explaining that um, just their installers really struggle with com this communication back to the store, trying to find an easier way for them to communicate. Um, this probably won't ever involve evolve into that, um, because we will be on Q Pro, right? By the time we did some of the things that you're talking about. There's going to be better other tools that do exactly what you're talking about that would be integrated. Okay, so it's not like we would never, all these things that I'm talking about are temporary things because we have other things that are coming, other technologies that are coming through other avenues. So this is just kind of a, a temporary thing to help with um, some, solve a, a, a problem that we think that we would need solving. Um, there, there are other apps that people use in this room. You could talk to Waylon right here in the blue shirt. Raise your hand, Waylon, from Arkansas. <clears throat> he uses an outside messaging uh, installation service. And I don't know, he might talk about that in a little bit, but uh, um, uh, that works really well for their... There's, there's hundreds of them out there that are already developed. They don't all integrate with QFloors, but... Um, there are some messaging things for installers. Okay. Um, let me talk just a little bit about, oh man, now I'm not good. Um, I'm just going to breeze through this. We've added more commercial features into QFloors recently, right? Um, whoops. I didn't, this is the wrong slide. That's the QP slide. Oh, there we go. Um, so we've added some more features. Um, we've been testing these. A lot of our QFloors customers are using these. Um, you know, QFloors is unique in this in this sense. Most other commercial, and we're talking bid work commercial, not Main Street, right? This is AI reporting, change, um, change orders, all this kind of stuff that is commercial specific features. Um, most other solutions, you have to buy a whole separate, just a commercial package. And they're expensive. Five user, $50,000, right? Type of a thing. You that have used some of these, you know that. It's because there's fewer only commercial only dealers out there. Um, or there's other solutions out there where they're using their retail side to try to do commercial work. So the retail features, right? QFloors is really unique in this aspect that you can do both. We have features for both residential and commercial in the same package. And for right now, it's the same price, right? And in the future, newer people coming in, we might be charging something extra. But but for right now, um, it's a heck of a deal, and it's a lot of things that you that you can do. Lisa, where are you at at Unity? Is she here? She was here last night. Anyway, she's a commercial only dealer that's here. If you want, she's been using Q floors just for commercial only. Um, if you get with her, I don't know where we we can find her, but um, she's she's used a lot of other commercial packages, and she's using Q floors now just for commercial. So um, we feel like the features are there um, for commercial. Um, there will be classes tomorrow about this for more information. Um, Postgres, um, Postgres, um, this is something that we've been working on for a couple of years now, um, actually maybe three. And basically what it is is that we're converting all the QFloors information into a new technology where it's saved. It's called a database. Um, it's just where all the information is stored. In the past, for a small business, 
uh, we've used SQLite for high performance. We'll use the technology called Scythebase. We're moving both of those into a technology called Postgres. Okay, so it's a everybody will be moving at some point in time into this newer technology. It's taken us a lot of testing, a lot of a lot of time to make sure because you can imagine if the data is not good when it comes through, that could be a real problem, especially if you've been on it for 20 years. You know, and so it's it's taken us a while to get this going. Q Cloud Two is on uh, Postgres only. I think I missed my Q Cloud Two slide. I'm not sure. Anyway, Q Pro, which is our new thing, is in Postgres, and these will be gradual conversions. Yeah, let me let me talk about. Let me go back and talk about. I must have missed my Q Cloud Two slide on here somewhere. Um, Q Cloud. Who here is on Q Cloud? Okay, bunch. You know what? Three quarters of the room, more than sixty percent, is on Q Cloud. That's about right. We have over five hundred dealers um, that are on our Q Cloud product currently, um, and this is what we now call Q Cloud One. We have a Q Cloud Two, another cloud version that it's a new environment, it's new technology, new servers, new everything. The way we do things is a little bit different on there. And we're starting to migrate now. We've been creating this for another two or three years. So Postgres and QCloud2 have been multi-year projects, right? Uh, currently we have on QCloud2, we have about 70 dealers. And QCloud1, we have had we have 500. So just to give you an idea, all new dealers are going on to QCloud2 right now. So we're not putting anybody else onto our Cloud One product. Um, we've been cleaning up some of the bugs there and just making sure things are really stable. Q Cloud One has been out for, you know, more than ten years, so it's very stable, right? Because we've been using it for so long. So we're not rushing into this, but eventually, all of you Q Cloud customers will be moving over to Q Cloud Two. And when we move you, you have to convert you from your database over to Postgres. So it's not only that's a two pronged conversion, right? It's a cloud conversion and it's a database conversion all at the same time. So you can see we've been putting all this infrastructure, a lot of time and money into these technologies. We've spent setting these up, testing them. It's a lot, a lot of money. And uh, uh, just so you know, but it's putting the infrastructure in place so that everybody feels comfortable that we are progressing the technology Q Cloud 2 is more secure than Q Cloud 1. So there's a security factor in there. So there's reasons behind why we're doing this, right? Microsoft licensing is a, another issue and stuff like that. All right, we've got questions I will repeat. Go ahead. Uh, Q Cloud 1 to Q Cloud 2, they will start to move gradually. We've already started moving some people. The bigger companies will probably come a little bit last. Oh, I didn't repeat the question. Yeah, when will the Q Cloud, yeah, one people be moving to Q Cloud two? It will be a gradual move. We'll be contacting you. Some people will need to move sooner than later. Um, anyway, there's some reasons, but but it it won't be a rush. We're not. It's not going to be flip on, flip off because. We've got to convert your databases too, right? So we've got to run a program. Some of you, if you've been on it 20 years, it might take us two or three hours to, to actually convert the data to the new formats and all that kind of stuff. All right? And with the Q Cloud One. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah, so that's still the same. So yeah, the, the Q Cloud two, none of that. The licensing, the users. She, she was asking, is there any change to how the user is logging in? No, but I think I know your question. You're asking a Q Pro question that's kind of mixed in. And I wanted to clarify that right now. So um, I'm, I'm gonna move on to Q Pro. So 
there's there's a kind of a widespread confusion between QCloud and QPro, okay? Because they are both cloud products, right? And so people are confused. I thought QPro, QCloud, there's there's not really a good understanding there. So that's where we're going to spend the the rest of our not very much time here is on QPro. And then I'll, I'll probably, what I will do is I'm going to spend more time um, probably on Saturday uh, with QPro. But this is your exact question, QPro. What is it and how is it different from QCloud, right? So I'm going to sit down here for a second if that's okay. Um, <clears throat> and um, let me just answer, because I think there is still confusion about the difference between QPro and QCloud. What is Q, QPro, right? So let me get over here. Um, first of all, this doesn't look anything like QFlores, right? This is the opening screen for QCloud or uh, for QPro. Thank you, I'm confused. Okay. So I think you all know what QFloors looks like. QFloors and QCloud looks exactly the same. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't look any different. But this, you can see this comes up in a browser. And um, here's my sales tab, my material tab, my bills and credits, checkbook, employees, report, setup, right? So kind of the same thing as going across the top of QFloors. But you can see it's in a browser, it's in tabs. Here's my cell screen. I have a list just like I do in QFloors. If I click on here, the details of that cell come up on the right-hand side of the screen over here. Let me come back just a little bit. You can see them here, right? And you can scroll through your items just like you could. So this is line one, two, three. So this is QPro. This is what you're talking about when we go off of QFloors and QCloud, then we will be coming to a new technology called QPro, which will, the, the hosting charges and stuff will go away, right? There's an extra hosting charge for QCloud, or, or yeah, QCloud. And so I think that's kind of what you're talking about. So there's a confusion. There is a definite difference between QFloors, QCloud, which is hosted cloud online and Q Pro, which is web-based. And I, I think there's still a confusion among our customers what this all means, but this is what it is. This is the new thing. We've been working on this for about eight or nine years now, eight years. I mean, there was a couple of years at the first where it was a lot of R&D and stuff like that. We released in 2020 the official first version of QPro that people were using. Um, we, since 2020, we rewrote all of the user interface again. I think in our last users conference a year and a, uh, ago, I told everybody that we had two separate development teams, one working on the first version of QPro and then a second. So we had two teams going. We have since gotten rid of the QPro one first team, like not gotten rid, but re reassigned and we're not working. And we've converted all of our customers that were on QPro, the original, over onto what we call QPro 2 or or this QPro version now, right? So it, this is brand new. I think it was about in April when we had everybody convert over. So we've had, you know, all of our QPro customers that are on there right now using this. These are all smaller customers right now, right? The features are limited. They're not the same features that are in Q4s um, right now. Um, but they're getting there. Um, we're getting closer and closer to where I'm starting to feel more comfortable that like by the first quarter this year, if there's any Qfloors users that are not using our accounting system, that are using QuickBooks and Qfloors, they, they would probably be good candidates to come over because almost all the features that that are in QFloors in the first two screens will be there, okay? Um, the highlights of this, 
you can move uh, cells order lines. You can delete cells order lines. Um, there's a new job costing screen in here that if I click out this new job costing screen here, you can see that you don't have to right click to bring up and change the job cost anymore. You can just change the cost right here, right on this screen like this. You can scroll up and down the screen. If you click on here, it will highlight the, nut, the line number on the left-hand side. If you click on here, it will highlight the job cost that corresponds on the other side. So they're connected and linked together. But this makes it so if you have to change a bunch of job costs at one time, you can just go right down through the right-hand side of the list and just change everything right there, okay? So there's, yeah, so there's a lot of improvements um, that we've made. Um, you know, the, uh, we just finished the, the, um, the emailing feature in here. So there's a document manager, just like in QFloors, but it's more integrated, right? So you can dra drag and do drop documents. You'll be able to do that for sales, for materials, for builds, for, you know, not just right now, it's just on the cell screen. So there's a lot of improvements, a lot of updates. You know, I could take this line right here and I can move it up if I wanted to. You know, so uh, let's see. Oh, the status is complete. I can't do it on a completed job. Um, so if I wanted to change this line to go up above this line right here, I just click on it and I can move it up and it will change, right? I can delete. So if I wanted to delete it, I just hit that. Um, it says, do you want to delete? I can delete. Do I want to insert? I can insert, right? If I wanted to insert a, a line right there, you can see I inserted it in there. So all these things about, you know, being able to manipulate, do I want to uh, collapse or expand? You know, if I take this right here, I can collapse all these lines that are all underneath one thing so that if I had a hundred lines on a sales order, I could collapse it down into areas or into uh, different types of products. And, um, and so it collapses, it expands. You can actually create five different levels of collapsing and expanding, right? So if you wanted to have top floor carpet and then wanted to just do all your carpet there and then top floor um, tile, and, and so you could expand all the carpet, collapse the carpet, expand the tile, collapse the tile. Collapse the first floor, so you could do that, right? Cabinets, just think about cabinets, how you could really, this is made for kits and cabinets and stuff like that. And so, hold on, and I'll get to you guys' questions in here in a second. And so there's all these new things, the 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 notes feature, there's a new notes feature, um, let's see, right here, where you have all different kinds of notes, and they're all formatted, and you know, you can have work order notes, sales order notes. I mean, you could have notes galore in here. Um, you can put comments in between lines. You can put comments with lines. You could have a product with 10 comments underneath it, right? If you wanted to, you know, you could have all this kinds of, all these kind of things. Um, let's see here. Um, now I don't, I had an email anyway. In, in the email uh, section here, you can also um, format the bodies of your email with bolding, underline, text, you know. So it's right from here, you can do all of that kind of stuff. So all these kind of things that people have been asking for in QFloors that are really hard, that would be really hard to add to QFloors, um, you know, you're gonna be seeing more and more of these things kind of coming here. The, the screens can collapse. So if I hit this like little button up here to the, to the top, you can see that it just shows the detailed side of the screen so that you can see more invoice lines at one time, right? Or if I hit the other side, then it's just the list side of the window. So if you're on a phone and things like that, you can you know do that. So um, all these little buttons right here, if you scroll over each one, one's like add a product, add labor, add a comment, you know, move, all that kind of stuff. So all of these, you know, duplicate an item. These uh, icons are kind of like the, 
the way things are driven and, you know, select a contact to put on here. So the reason I'm kind of showing you this is that everybody at the conference uh, before the end of today, I don't want you getting on it right now, but before we leave today, just remind me, we're going to give you usernames and passwords that you can go in and play around with this version of, of this. And so by the end of the week, we can have a better discussion about this. Um, answer more questions. We don't have a lot of time right now, but um, we can't do it for everybody at home because this environment that we have is limited. We don't want to overload the system with uh, thousands of people. So it, this is virtually what people are using today, but we separated it off into a separate environment so that we weren't um, affecting our, our real customers at all. So we're kind of limited. So we figured the people here today, we can we can allow that to happen. But if I was to get a thousand people on there, I think it wouldn't be good. So, um, so we're we'll, we'll the people that are at the show will have the opportunity to do that, and then we'll probably take it down afterwards. So let me. I've got three people with questions, but just hold on for one second, and then I'll I'll come back. Right, we're running a little short on time. I'll try to answer them. Material screen is fairly similar to what we're already used to. Okay, um, I will tell you this. One of the advantages is that in a browser, you can duplicate um, a tab. So you could have actually, if you wanted to have five sales orders up at one time, you could do that. If you wanted to have a sales order and three materials screens up at one time, you could do that. Okay, so that that is one advantage of a browser, right? So our material screens fairly similar to what you're used to now. The Features are gonna be fairly similar. I will show you this. I'm announcing today that we've already started working on the accounting side of things, okay? So that's that's already coming, we're starting to come along. If you, this is the first time we're showing the bills and credit screen up here. So if you look up here, we now have a bills and credit screen. Now, when you click on things, nothing really happens too much yet, but you can see that this is what it will look like, and this is how it will respond. Um, checkbook, also, you can see that we've got our checkbook screen going. So we've started down the road, and it's been a long time. I know a lot of you have been waiting, because most of you in this room, to tell you the truth, you will want to wait for the accounting part. Okay, you don't... I think most of you would become less efficient right now if you tried to convert, which what that means is it will cost you a lot of money, okay? And so I don't think it's really worth it. Plus it's still in kind of the development stages. Um, I, you have two separate systems running simultaneously. Say, what, say that. How could you convert with the accounting system not working? Well, what people do right now, the people that are using it, they use QuickBooks or something else. They use two systems. That's what I'm saying. I don't suggest you do it. <laughs> Unless there are people in here that aren't even using accounting at all, they might be Canada. They just haven't gotten to that point yet, right? But I, I my, and we've said this for a long time, it's just not the right time. I'm going to say for 95% of you, <laughs> right? We are selling QPro and there are people that are going on to it. The majority are one and two um, user type systems. Mom and pop, a million dollars or under a year, million and a half, something like that, right? So those are people that are, they've never used technology before. They're kind of, I mean, they're using pen and paper. They're just, they're not too sure about it. This might be a good option for them, right? People that are experienced users, it's not. What? Okay, so I always get the same question. Um, when we first started this, I, oh, she asked, thank you. She asked, when do you think this will all be ready, the accounting portion and everything, right? Um, so we always get this question. Um, the, the real answer was, is when we started it, I thought it would take three years. We're at eight now. And we haven't, we're just starting it, right? So I thought total it would take three years. I was off by a long ways. Um, the, the re there's reasons, I don't, I can't go into all of them, but 
the technology to do this is much, much harder than it is just the Q4 stuff. It's, it's a, and, and as a result, we're the only ones that are doing it. Most of our competitors are taking their older technologies and continuing to build somewhat web interfaces on top of them. In my opinion, that's not gonna work very well in the long run. It might be satisfactory in the short run, but the weight is, and what I'm going to deliver to you is, is gonna be first rate and it's gonna be top notch and it's gonna be the standard for the industry and everybody else will be trying to catch up. And they'll eventually be forced to change or they'll lose their customers. So this goes kind of back to my initial, um, to my initial thing. My commitment to my customers and to the industry is I'm going to deliver a QPro. Even though it take, has taken us millions more than we ever thought and a lot more time, I think it's the right thing to do. I still, in my heart, believe that it's the right thing to do. It's what you guys deserve. It's what you want. Um, and it will be first class product. And and so that's what I'm here to do. I kind of I kind of now feel like it's my mission, right? To deliver this. I, I do. I, I everybody that knows me, close to me, they all know it. That this is my passion and and what I'm gonna do. So coming back, how long is it gonna take? Being a very bad estimator, but I I was probably basing it on what I thought it would be in Q4s, right? Um, but we're getting better. We're getting faster. This new version, the reason why we converted over it is because we can do it faster. What it took us six years to do in Q Pro 1 took us a year and a half in Q Pro 2. The same exact thing, right? So you can see that one of the reasons we switched was to speed things up. I really feel like a year and a half from now, like surfaces, not this year, but the next year, we will be testing the accounting with real people live. My anticipation is when we have this user's conference next time that we will be talking only QPro. Two years. Two years. In two years. Did I say one? <laughs> Oh, next user's conference, which is will be two years away, that we will just be. Yes, everybody will convert. Well, you'll either convert or just stay where you're at. You, you, you can choose to stay there, but there will be no upgrade. Well, it'll be there. You can still use it, but you won't, you know, it won't be continually to, our resources will be put into Cube Pro and we'll be upgrading that. And, it, Q floors will still be there for a while. There's some bigger companies in here that will still need to use it because the only people will be able to convert are the people that are able to, as the features get more rich and more complete, then more and more people will be able to convert. There already is. Uh, it is a cloud-based version. It's a partner that we already have with with a scheduler. No, no, it's a different company. It's called Skedit, and they've already integrated into Qflows, yeah, uh, into QPro. And we suspect other scheduling companies. I mentioned there's hundreds of them out there. We su suspect others will do the same. Yes, well, uh, yes, they have their own apps. Uh, the the viewer. Yes, yes. Question was, can they manipulate in the field? All right, there's some questions, and I know they're telling me I'm over time. Um, but we will we will shelve a lot of this, and I'm going to let you play with it, and then we'll bring our questions back at the end of the week, and we'll spend as much time as you want. You can catch me in the hall. Hey, it doesn't do this. It does do this. Whatever, I can I can go through a lot of that. There were three or four people with questions. Let me answer those questions really quickly. I know I put you off. Is it okay? Okay. Did I? 
did everybody get me all their questions? Okay. I think we made it. I'm only 10 minutes late. That means our vendor partners are going to have to know. <laughs> They're okay. Uh, we'll, we'll make it through all this. So, so grateful for, I, I hope you know that I am so grateful for you to be here. And so grateful for all that you do for us. I know I've been pointing this way. Sorry, you probably had my back to you. So if you want to see my face, sit over here tomorrow. No, no we'll be split up tomorrow. So, no. oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, so grateful for all of you. I, I really am, each each and every one of you for being here. And uh, we'll take a, a short minute, uh, you know, what, 10-minute break. And then we'll be back here at, at uh, 10, uh, 10, 10. Try to be back in here, and we're going to start with some other things. Thank you so much for coming.